Iranians believe, you know, have a national identity that precedes not only Shiism, but precedes Islam itself. It was a glorious empire at the time of the Romans and the Byzantians and the Egyptian Empire. It was part of, it was a superpower in the old ancient world. And that's important to the Iranians. They see themselves as an ancient civilization. And partly, uh, they don't want to be judged only through what's happened in the past 20 years. But at the same time, they are Muslims. They're very much like Italians or Greeks. Italians are Catholics, even if you don't think of them as practicing Catholics. But Italians are also the inheritors of the Roman Empire, which existed before Christianity. And similarly with the Greeks. They are very passionately Greek Orthodox. They're very attached to their religion. It's their identity. But at the same time, there is ancient Greece. And at times, these, um, in the case of Iran, these identities can clash but at, t at times they can also come together. Well, it sounds to me like it's a matter of respect that they demand and feel that they ju are justified in having respect and they may not be getting enough respect insofar as the West is concerned or insofar particularly as Ahmadinejad, the president, is concerned. You're absolutely correct. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot about this nuclear issue has mm -hmm. to do with the respect that Iran believes as a great power it should have. Namely, there are people in Iran who want to export the Iranian revolution. But average Iranian believes that Iran is a regional power. It is not the countries around it. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's not Dubai. It's not Kuwait. It's not Jordan. It is something much bigger. And that uh, it, it has to be recognized that it is much bigger. That is a nationalistic demand. And that's exactly where this regime is able to tap into that demand in order to resist Western pressure with regard to its nuclear technology. It's interesting. In terms of nationalism, I want to come back a bit or go back a bit. You left Iran in 1979 when the Ayatollah Khomeini came to power. Some people say, or some observers say, that what he did was unleash sort of a modern international Islam rather than a pure nationalist Islam, which may have existed in various countries before. Is there any truth to that? Yes, because the Iranian revolution was much like the, so the Russian revolution. At the beginning, it was all about ideology. It did not recognize national boundaries. Khomeini believed that his ideology would travel. There would be other revolutions, and they will all sort of melt together under his leadership, which is very much like Len the way Lenin saw the Soviet revolution. Mm -hmm. But then after Lenin passed away, you had nationalism come back. So people would ask, is Stalin really a communist, or is he really a Russian nationalist? Is he the last czar, if you would? And you could ask that about the leaders of Iran. To what extent are they really um, you know, Islamic fundamentalists, and to what extent they now have become the embodiment of Iranian sort of nationalism. It's not secular nationalism. It's a nationalism that finds its language in what the, the revolution that Khomeini brought about. But Iran sort of, its history sort of parallels what, what we saw already mm -hmm. in China, we saw in Russia, we may have even seen the French Revolution of sort of that idealism ultimately settling back into national identity. 